Captain's log. Stardate. Uh, something. The last crew gave up their lives for the mission, but they found out some vital information off the course of some planet. It is up to our next team to go in their balls deep and make sure that the mission gets accomplished. Right now, we are running a course of 60 parsecs across the galaxy. Humanity, save us. We're gonna choose a new adventure again, and I am- Oh, we can do this! Space drill? Pick an asteroid. okay. Voyager? Pick- What the hell do these do? Is survival the one where we just survive? I don't actually have to get the things. I think so, I'm not sure. I'm gonna try that one. Um, and I'm gonna try Emmett. People told me in the comments of the last one to try Emmett because he's the most intelligent. So, that sounds pretty good. Make five successful intelligence attrib attribute decisions. Okay. Um, Didi's good at agility. Uh, Baby Bronco's good at strength. God, he is a star next to his strength. He is completely maxed out. Um, you're- you're no use. I don't want you. Oh, and I don't really need you either. So Emmett, Emmett, Dee Dee, and Baby Bronco are the three that I should really have. Because one's good at intelligence, one's good at agility, and one's good at, um, strength. So if I have one of all each, I don't need four people. I think if I have four people, I run out of food too quickly. So having three people is good. Um, but I don't know how the survival aspect of this is actually gonna work. Start date. Day one. Fuck. <laughs> I'm stuck here on a spaceship with two people I do not really like. We have a Mysterio costume from Spider-Man in the background. Closing off. Okay, what do we got? Greetings, Astro Computerized, blah blah blah. So I got this, ooh, nice. Uh, plus four minerals, the lighter sock puppet. I already have the communicator, that's great! Nice! Okay, what are we doing? Captain, this is the first day of your command of your interstellar voyage. Oh yeah, I need to- I need to give them a- a rousing speech. And last time I didn't realize, like, I had to pick stuff that I'm good at. So last time I gave a rousing speech with something, and it didn't go down well because she's good at agility. Um, I think. So I'm gonna give an intelligence speech this time, because I have three intelligence. And I forgot that giving a good speech rouses your team behind you. And if they believe in you, I think they last longer. Um, and I need to remember to use these systems almost all the time. Okay. Probably still gonna die, but... You know what? Star date! Day two! You knew exactly what to say. Your convincing speech was more than enough to prove your worth as the captain of the last human crew... ...in the universe. That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live the captain! Filled the cabin out of two people. Um, uh, it's not a very big cabin. If any sound could travel through the soundless void outside the hull of our ship, that would be it. One thing is for sure, you are ready for any challenge this galaxy throws at you. Yes! Captain, the crafting module in the back of the cabin is now available. You might remember this from your Astro Citizen training. Blah, 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 blah. Um, alright, what can I craft? Uh, fuck all. Um... Armor, no. Armor's real good. Upgrade, okay, I can't really do anything yet. I wanna craft one of these. I'm gonna craft an artifact, because then the artifact can be burnt down into soup. Um, also, do not feed people until they're starving. That's something I remembered as well, or realized. Space travel can be dull, but there are still tons of ways to make your own fun. Trust me, I live in a computer. Let's design a game. Your game will need a core mechanic, which could revolve around an item. Get creative, what kind of game will you design? Um, right, let's design a game where you're trapped in space and you have to survive. Okay, I have a lighter, let's use that. Alright, moving on, start date. Day three. <laughs> you designed your game around the lighter. The core mechanic of your game was chase the crew around the shuttle. If the person you were chasing got burned, they owed you ten push-ups. You played until you realized how much the fire made you miss Earth. At least you could camp there. 
Remember camping? Ah, I remember. S'mores, graham crackers. Wow. I had my first s'more for the first time ever the other day. It wasn't a fully fledged s'more. Somebody made it on a cooker. Um, but I got the general gist of what it was. Um, it was pretty tasty. Uh, let's recycle you. <laughs> People were pointing out last time, I said that this is going to be super important, and then I just immediately recycled it. I needed soup! Oh my gosh, you found a holographic chest set on the- on board. You've never heard of holographic ch- I did this before. Let's play holographic chest with the computer with my smart boy brain. Day four! And the big brother house, Emmett has shit his pants! I can't believe you defeated me at holographic chess. How? The computer always wins. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. These are all the same things as last time. Let's craft some Supertron. Can't use this yet. Captain, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The bad news is that Stacy left. She took everything and left you with nothing. Except this message. The good news is that using the airlock as a space toilet was a success. It's now packed full and ready to be emptied in space. The bad news is that the airlock hatch is jammed. If you don't fix it, Clock toilet will quickly become an extinction level event. Fuck. I could have crafted some tape! Dang it, man. Alright, well let's go another day and see how many people fucking die! Day 5 on the Big Brother ship. Doing nothing about the airlock toilet was risky, Captain. Looking for you, the door and jammed on its own. Woo! Yes! Okay, we did it anyway. Nice, Rooney. Oh, now I have this. Sure, you can peruse Astro Citizen promotional materials when bored, but no, don't put that on. Captain, you have just initiated the Weight Observer 1000 on your wrist. It's just a marketing gadget, cracked and defective. When you look at yourself now, you see a bulky bulldog. That is some nice alliteration. It's supposed to motivate you to lose weight. Stop scratching your ear, or at least take your shoes. Ship needs a captain. Sock puppet! When in doubt, sock puppet! I'm the captain! I say what goes! And it's up to me, day six in the big brother ship. The Weight Observer 1000 made you see yourself as a bulky bulldog. Nice alliteration again, but you embraced it, taking full advantage of becoming a dog. Alright. Uh, cannot craft a Rooney, and cannot upgrade a duty. Right, so, that's not working, we're gonna have to wait a little bit. We found a small metal box in one of the compartments labeled, Do Cert, Do Open. Who is Cert? We are not certain who he is or what they were. But you could take apart the lock and gather some elements from it, ignoring what's inside, or you could try to open it. I am... Which will require deft fingers. I don't need deft fingers. I've got smart brains! It's not gonna work, is it? Nice beard. You carefully dismantled the lock in the box you found in the shuttle. The box being useless now, you turned your attention to the parts of the disassembled lock. Okay, so we got some power. Baby remains loyal. You should eat something, Captain. Megan is hungry. Okay. Okay, but y'all are just hungry. So that's good. You're not starving yet. What's this? Oh. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions, but I cannot identify who is sending them, or more importantly, what they contain. We need to decipher the signals. Okay, Emmett's gonna do it because he's a smarty pants. Alright. Um, what the hell is this thing? An atomic battery! Yes! Okay. Let's see what happens. Hopefully we don't get swallowed by space cows. How long did I last last time? Was it like 29 days? First contact. Captain, you need to see this. I'm not uh, easily excited. Yeah, yeah, we did this last time. So this is this is not new. Oxygen level is dropping. We have a malfunctioning filter in the main in the main onboard support circuit for two oxygen ways, Moscow for short. You should fix it. You can reach Moscow from the zero G space between the hole and the outer deck. Um Okay, so who should do this? I forget. What are you good at? You're clever. Okay, we'll send Megan out to do it. 
I don't want to send Emmett out to do everything. He's really good, but... Experimental? What? He's really clever, but I don't want to send him out too many times in case he goes crazy. Day 9 on the ship. She looks very satisfied like she took the biggest shit of her life. Also, I got a nice little cup of coffee right here. Oh, don't you bad bitches wish that you had this as well? That good dirty bean water? Yeah, yeah. Get it all inside your cheekbones. Mm. Uh, as Megan descended below deck, she noticed an obscene hand drawing of an American and a Soviet. Megan blushed furiously, then tripped into a mess of wires like a fork diving into a spaghetti plate. Mmm, delicious. Still tangled, she forgot to pause the airflow before removing the filter. What a fucking dumbass. When carbon dioxide hit her, Megan made a face not unlike the Soviet in that drawing. Many brain cells must have died in that very moment. The sacrifice was not in vain, though. We now have a fully functional navigation. You were starving, you are starving, starving. Okay. Okay, so we got a landing site now, but you are starving. But you're okay. Um, alright, ration to everybody. Good, good, good. Captain, we stopped moving. An, an automaton, or automaton as they like to call it, is tethering us. I'll play its transmission on the main display. Want to do good in the universe? The fluff scales need your help. A picture of an animal, a fluff scale presumably, fills the screen. It's a cross between a wild hog, roadkill, and a snake. The roadkill looks like a, at you expectedly, since their masters went extinct, fluff scale. I'll give them a soup. I don't want to wage war. The fluff scales are going to come back and help me later on if I survive that long. Friend zone. Day 10. Everybody is looking happy and healthy. Transmission about suffering fluff scales clearly moved you. The automaton, or automaton, I don't know, seemed genuinely surprised when you approached with a can. Apparently, the most typical response involved weapons, and you were the first to donate. Overjoyed, the automaton shared some of its battery power with you and promised more if you referred it to a friend's. Ooh, nice. Ooh, I can craft some soup. Hell yeah, I can get the soup back that I lost. Okay, that's still unavailable. We need to go out and start- We need to start doing some, uh, EVAs. Extravehicular activity. I learned that from the Kerbals. Ah, oh, I missed the Kerbals. Captain, thus far I've kept the shuttle in artificial gravity, but I need to see how well you and the crew can adapt to a zero gravity or weightless environment. Uh, the benefit of weightlessness is that you can store anything anywhere, like pee is stored inside the balls. The downside is it's harder to move around. If one more person runs zero-g tests at a time, it will be chaos. Who do you want to test? Let's test Baby Bronco, because he is going to go out on his missions. I'm going to be sending him out in the expeditions because he's strong and he can punch anyone in the face and end their life. Crafty! I got an achievement. Ah, uh, hey boss. I'm- I'm feeling pretty good. There's a fucking planet out there. There's two planets out there. Baby did not pass the zero gravity test because he's a big stupid oaf. As soon as I stopped the shuttle's rotation, he panicked and started thrashing around like a fish out of the water. Baby, you dumbass! Shuttle supplies paid the price for baby's clumsiness. The, you broke our atomic battery, you big fucking do- You know what? You know what? It's fine. It's fine. No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, okay? Um, Captain, wake up! We're approaching some sort of celestial body. It resembles a moon, but I think it's a small planet. Let me run a quick scan. Ninety-six percent. Ninety-eight percent. One hundred percent scanning complete. I was right. A small, rocky planet with no organic life forms. But there's a lot of movement down there. Strange, my scanners detect a breathable atmosphere, but low in oxygen. Uh, Captain, if you want to land on this planet safely, you will need to fix a small malfunction in our steering system. Since we're not even able to turn at the moment- Oh, and you will have to do it before we float away from the planet- Okay. Use the handbook. The handbook will tell you how to fix everything. Go, handbook power, go! Day- Uh-oh. Well- That fucking worked. Did that say robot foo? You flip through the trusty handbook, looking for some kind of manual, or at least a how to land a spaceship for dummies chapter. 
Not sure if it was your fast reading skills or pure luck, but you opened the book on the right page. Following the instructions, you reconnected some cables and steered the shuttle toward the ground. Clearly it fucking worked. It was not a soft landing. Nobody is doing great after this stunt. Not even me. I miss my father most of all. I'm shaken to my cores. Yes, all of them. Your face had a pretty unpleasant close encounter with our communicator module. You didn't break it, did you? And at least one of these things is useless now. Consider fixing it if you want to avoid radio silence in the future. Fuck's sake. What's next, Captain? Maybe you could use the information I found while scanning the environment. There are robotic units not far from here. Oh, fucking absolute units! In awe at the robots of those lads. But my scan detected very few aggressive signatures. I think these are peaceful automatons. Most of them. Perhaps they can be of help to you. Okay, sweet. Okay, so the expedition module is up and running. I have one of these. We're able to detect transmission. Okay. You do that. Can I craft anything? No. I love this music. Um. All right. Cool. And then I'm gonna send somebody out. What do I need most of all? Oh God. Three days length or three lengths? Confirm. Okay. Chance for materials, or a chance for power, and that causes three as well. Let's just go do this one. Ah, go, baby. You can put on the armor, and you can bring a soup, because you're going to starve out there otherwise. I think. I literally have no idea what I'm doing. So, ha, uh, let's see what happens. What's important is that day 13 in the Big Brother ship, Megan has a look on her like she wants to eat my ass. But after shitting my pants four parsecs ago, I'm not sure that that is possibly the best idea. Great success, Captain! Communicator attached to the communications console works like a charm. I won't judge the aesthetics, since we can finally receive and answer transmissions. Now all we need to do is for someone to contact us. Someone will find us. Eventually. You can tell Megan was amazed by what we have achieved today. She almost smiled. Almost. But her- she was afraid that if she smiled that her face would crack like a fine porcelain doll. Babies went off to explore the nearby you were starving. Okay. Wait, did I just say Megan's proud to call me a friend? Oh, But she's also starving. Oh no, I only have one soup! Okay, I can craft more soup though. Okay, Emmett, you're more important to me right now, so you need the soup first. You can survive a day, alright? Okay? Okay, I'm glad we're in agreement. A sweet old man looking like Charles Darwin is knocking at the airlock politely. You let him in, he shakes your hand. Then he holds it in an iron grip and won't let go. With technology, evolution stops. Soviet scientists want our species to stay strong, so they created me, the natural selection bot. He claims it is for your own good, which is what the dentist always said, and you didn't believe him either. You've let me in, despite the warning signs. Now you now face your space predator, human. He does have a point, Captain. Oh, I can see why you'd want to postpone the discussion. Defend yourself! I have nothing. I gave the armor to baby, I don't have a shovel, and the gun, if I had it, I'd probably shoot myself in the head, just so I didn't have to go through all of this. Family friendly. Okay, well, we're still alive. A Darwinian predator droid held you in its grip. You cursed the weakness of your human body out loud as you tried to wrestle free. The droid froze, offended. The human body is not weak. It is a wonder of evolution. In a zealous rage, the droid preached about evolution. You edged it closer to the airlock, then pushed it out mid-lecture. You're safe, but the droid's verdict inspired dark thoughts in your head. Are you fit for survival? Are you the weak link? No. You are the strong link that's going to protect Hyrule and save Zelda. You are still very mentally stable. Am I? I'm not sure about that. But okay, there. There's your food. Warning! Warning! We have a breach! The ship is about to be contaminated! I'm engaging all the emergency protocols available, but my efforts appear to be useless. This contamination cannot be avoided. Ay 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 ay! You have to protect yourself, Captain, before it's too late! Zordon! Okay. <laughs> uh, well, balls, um... I'm gonna recycle that. I'm fucked. I'm already fucked. This game's hard, man. I mean, the old 
60 seconds game. Oh god, we're all covered in goo and jizz. The, the old game is really hard as well, and it was only by luck that when everything aligns itself, like, you're not guaranteed a win every time. It's not a case of, like, getting in and then I just manage things poorly. That's part of it. But it's a case of you just might not have the items necessary, and it's all RNG, so... It's about lasting as long as you can until something clicks. Haven't you heard, Captain? The ship got contaminated, so please explain to me in a way that a humble AI like myself couldn't understand. Why would you not protect yourself? Oh, I don't know, Alpha. Maybe because I don't fucking have anything. The fever, the coughing, and all the other symptoms I can confidently identify as icky are the result of this unfortunate crisis. The good news is they should be over soon. Okay, I'm sick. Did we get- we didn't get any meds, did we? <coughs> okay! Cover your fucking mouth! Alright, I just asked for your status, not the weather. Captain! Stop dancing immediately and listen! I wasn't? This is a crisis. You are not a sailor on Broadway. Although I must admit, you improvise beautifully. You have both been poisoned. Uh, some kind of psychoactive toxin has found its way into the deadly neurotoxin. Might have something to do with an airlock being full of... You know what? Yes. Jizz. Uh, Alright, well, we can't do anything. I can craft another soupy boy, though. All right, baby, come back. Baby, come back. You can blame it all on me. Okay, he's still gone. You decided to let the toxin wear off on its own. You sang in unison about the sails of hope and the sea of progress. Wow, I'm feeling amazingly mega great. And it might be a good thing that in space, no one can hear you scream. No one can also smell the shit that's inside your pants, so poop away. It ended hours later and I'm still worried. You're barely speaking to me or each other. Was fantasy that much better than this? Each of you has a bright future ahead. That's what the Astro Citizen program is all about. It's all about PMA, guys. Just, hang, just fucking hang in there. Ooh, I can craft another soup. Alright, keep crafting soups. While doing a routine cleanup of my database, I came upon a blueprint for a device called the Flux Capacitor. If installed, it might allow us to find our way home. However, it needs to be assembled. Ah, uh, hell yeah. Me and the doc are gonna hit this thing back to fucking 88 miles an hour. I can't remember, is that the 84? 62? 88? I don't know. That's no moon. Ah! Fuck! Was she starving or did the sickness get her? Megan continues to look sick. <laughs> yeah, she, she's not looking great, is she? Now, I've seen some- I've seen some humans in my time, but that's not looking great. You're badly hurt, sir. You're a starving captain. Better grab a bite. Megan has failed to fight off the sickness. She did not survive. Baby is really tired. It's okay, you brought back 24, uh, nuggets. You were trying to assemble the flux capacitor yesterday when things went terribly wrong. One false move caused the contraption to explode. You got injured, but thankfully you weren't teleported anywhere or any when. Baby came back from the nearby robot village. The place isn't big, just a few streets and a few dozen robotic families at most. All of them seem peaceful. Anyway, Baby's state is a little fragile. He isn't very hungry and his mental state is questionable. Baby got a few lungfuls of some thick smoke. Oh, so he left and started vaping. <laughs> Doing good, Catherine. Alright, um... I'm detecting a huge energy surge beneath the surface. Seismic waves. I think there's an earthquake coming. The shuttle is sturdy, but this ground isn't. The soil has a high potential to liquefy when the earthquake hits. There's a better patch of rocky ground few yards ahead. You could use the shuttle's thrusters to sc Yeah, why not? Nothing venture, nothing gain. That's what I always say. Alright, um... All right, we'll, we'll leave it a day, and then we'll send Baby away. Oh shit, it said I was starving, didn't it? Okay, still alive. Use the shuttle thrusters to scoot. Very scientific, uh, astro term. 
onto a better patch of ground, coming to rest on the edge of a rocky soil the moment the earthquake hit. For a few nightmarish seconds, the shuttle bucked to and fro like a bad atmospheric entry, like a big old fart that came out after having too much chipotle. But the shaking stopped, you opened your eyes, and the strangest silence followed. Then you laughed. Then you realize that you're bleeding internally, so laughing made things worse. You now miss Stacy even more. I can't say if it was your engineering skill or dumb luck, but you were able to craft a high quality item. Score. Baby is rested, baby is starving. Okay, so both people are starving, right? Yeah. Alright, hopefully this works. Make a decision, okay. I can't do anything. Alright, we're in the end game now, fellers! Perfectly balanced, like all things should be. Well, fuck! You know what, Emmett? You've looked better. You know what, I know people said that you were a long, lanky streak of piss and skin and bones before, but now you're not even skin! How did you decompose so fast? Your life is over, cause of death. Starvation! I gave him soup! There are no more pages left in your story. Damn it. The ink has run dry. Not wanting to risk your health is generally a good instinct, Captain. But this time around it might have been the wrong call. The toxic winds blew over the shuttle and got into our unsecured air filters. The chemical makeup of the winds is such that it should kill most human organisms immediately. Those who survive would be sure to suffer horrible injuries. Captain, are you even listening? Cap- Captain! Hello? You're looking kind of rigid. Oh no, you're dead. Baby is weak, can you do something about it? I can. I can exit the mission because I'm not allowed to do anything else. <laughs> oh man, that one went worse than last time. This font and this, like, all about this UI right now is awful. <laughs> End adventure. Man, that didn't go well at all. Ooh, that's a cool poster. Alright, well at least now I tried it and I realized that there's... I'm, we're still learning things. There's there's a better captain. Emmett is a better captain than Dee Dee was Because he's just the smartest out of the bunch. I think I had a pretty decent team if I got um, what was his name? Tim Tam? If I could get him in as well as Emmett and uh, Daisy May over here, then I think that we'd have a fighting chance, but it's just it's still just all RNG It's trying to figure out I haven't played the game enough as well to figure out what each each thing is. Like, playing 60 seconds, I did a whole bunch of episodes on that. So you knew when somebody called to the door, it was like, okay, don't answer it this time, because last time I did that, somebody came in and shot us all. So it's that kind of thing. It's all a learning process. You have to play it a bunch of times to even realize what some of the win scenarios are, or what some of the game scenarios are. So I'll play it a few, a few more times to figure it out. And as we go, you guys can keep giving me tips in the comments, and hopefully we can get to a win scenario later on. But it's still fun to play. I still like the characters, I still like... I like this more than 60 seconds. I think the simpler mechanics in 60 seconds were better, but the, the style and the art of this and the music and the scenarios and the locations in this are way more fun than just sitting in a bunker. And so it was that our team met their perishable end. Once again realizing that the Earth and the cosmos are bigger battles to overcome than they ever thought possible. What will happen next? Find out next time on 60 Parsecs! Where, where is this? Can I not just stay here? I got a little robot friend, I'm safe here.